ฮัลโหลฮัลโI just got a follower uh, record. Thanks for following if you're watching. And if you're not. Oh, wait, my microphone is too loud. Thanks for following, Alex. I just need to lower my volume a little bit. There we go. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That's really nice, uh, Ricard. And it's good to see you too, Alex. Okay. Is anyone else from the Discord joining? Are you guys on Discord? Um, did you come from the Discord or how did you find us? Okay. Cool. Oh. I just, uh I'm from Twitter. Where can I find your Discord? I'm gonna put a link on the chat. Just give me a second. Invite. Uh, never generate. Okay. There you go. Maybe it should be called Discord, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Um, maybe I should uh, tweet about this. Like, I'm gonna tweet out that I'm streaming, I don't think I've done that before. And uh, today I'm gonna talk about the game's festival it was in the past week, which was big festival in Brazil, that is Brazilian and Independent Games Festival. Um, let me just tweet that I'm streaming, see if anyone joins. Basically, this past week I um, 
I went to this festival of independent games in Brazil because my game was a finalist there. Um, Rogue Mans, which is a roguelite with romance. And uh, it was a finalist for best Brazilian game. And it was a good festival. Like, I, I've gone to a big festival the past three years. And the previous editions were not so interesting to me, I think, but this one was like really nice. Yeah. I liked the the people there. So there were a lot of um, Brazilian developers that I like. And there were also a lot of international developers. And the ones I can like uh, name as very interesting people were um, uh, Dino Patti, who is the creator of Inside, one of the creators, I guess. You guys played inside uh, and also Limbo, which are very good games. Um, anyone in chat played uh, inside and Limbo? So that guy was there. He's doing a new game, uh, Summersville, something like that. Yeah. Alex played Limbo, very nice execution, but not really my kind of thing. I guess it's not mine either, but it's such a good game. Even though it's not my my type of game. And uh yeah. I I didn't speak personally to this guy, but uh he gave a talk and did some QA and said some interesting stuff, like he was talking about more about studio vision because he just started a new studio recently. Uh, I also met um, Patrick something. <laughs> Sorry, I don't remember his last name. As well, it's also super hard to pronounce because it's Polish. He's one of the creators of. Uh, Frostpunk and This War of Mine which are also good games even though I haven't played Frostpunk I'm sure it's good I I did play uh, This War of Mine and it's a really good game um, and uh, Patrick I actually had a meeting with him and I showed him his history of Realis and he liked the project. Uh, he said, like, um, he said he really liked how I was removing everything that was unnecessary from the game. So just like focusing on politics and ignoring everything else, basically. Um, and uh, anyway, he said that was important, and I agree, because that's how you get to what you really want to do, you need to, I don't know, it's something like trim the fat or cut the fat. Uh, that's the idea, I guess. This war of mine was a really nice idea. Would you say it was also nicely executed, Alex? I'd say so. But it was a very good concept. Um, so, okay, there was uh, Limbo and the side guy, you know, there was Frostpunk and the Dwarf Mine guy, uh, Patrick, and there was also uh, Alex says, uh, yeah, I think so, yeah, good game. Have you played Frostpunk? Uh, and there was also Chris Remo of Firewatch. Um, 
and other games that Chris Remo has worked on, but it's, I guess Firewatch is the most famous. Which I didn't play, but I, I watched it on YouTube and it, I thought it was good up until the end. I personally didn't like the end, but they were trying to say something with the, that ending. So, more power to them. I think I would have done it a bit differently, Alex says. I've heard good things about Farwash, not played it though. Yeah. Um, so I guess those were the international guests. Maybe that there's there's more I'm forgetting, but um, there are also a lot of Brazilian developers that I really like. So that was nice. Uh, meeting some friends and talking about my game and stuff. Uh, and also, th th I I met a Paradox developer who was who's called Luis. And he's a Brazilian who works at Paradox. He's a code specialist or something. Uh, but I, I actually I had a meeting with him to talk about Historia Realis. And it went like nicely. He's he's a nice guy, but um he works at Paradox Interactive, right? Not a Paradox Development Studio from what I could tell. Because it was like, oh, uh, Paradox's historical games are not really my thing, I like... Uh, he said he likes City Skylines. And I... Uh, like, uh, City Skylines is a great game, but... Uh, it's a, it's unfortunate that he wasn't one of the historical Paradox guys, if that makes any sense. But I did take a picture with him, just so I, like, have a picture with a par Paradox guy. And uh, I also met... Um, David? Who was... Uh, a co-founder of Raw Fury. Raw Fury is an indie publisher who published Kingdom, which is that pixel art uh, uh, platform view tower defense type of game where you you're a little king on a horse or something. And that guy was really really interested in Historia Realis. I really, we really connected, like, I was explaining the game to him and uh, he basically understood everything about the game, he, he was just getting my ideas uh, before I was saying them. And this is hard because a lot of, I met some other guys on, on, these, on these meetings and most people didn't really understand the game. But uh, this David from Raw Fury, he really got it and he saw the potential for the game. The Drake says, I've played that. Kingdom? Yeah. Alex says, yeah, Kingdom looks cool. I've not played it though. I played it a little bit. I, to be honest, I refunded that game. Like, I played it for like an hour and I, I was like, okay, this is cool, but it's it's not something I'm gonna play for a long time, so I refunded it. It was actually, I think, uh, the um, the reworked uh, version of the game, like Kingdom New Lands or something. Alex says I've heard it's not so deep, yeah. But uh, I need to talk more to David because I think he might have some good ideas for the game, for Historia Realis. He seemed like really knowledgeable. He worked at Paradox, like he said he was, he worked at Paradox 
around the time Crusader Kings 2 launched until Hearts of Iron 4 launched. That was quite a few years working at Paradox. And uh, so he really understood uh, the community of Paradox players and uh, the depth that the games have. So yeah. And uh, unfortunately Rogue Mans didn't get any prizes on, on the festival. I think the best Brazilian game was No Heroes Here. I'm not sure. Actually, let me Google that game because was it No Heroes Here? I I don't know much about this game. I'm pretty sure that's it. Wait, anyway, this is no heroes here. Seems like a co-op tower defense pixel art kind of thing. I should play this. So this one best Brazilian game for this year's big festival. Yeah. Anyway, I think that was all on the festival. If you have any questions, let me know. Record says, I don't know if you already talked about this, but when, what engine are you making Story Alice? I'm currently prototyping in Construct 2, and I went to work on uh, Unity once I have the prototype done. Alex says, congrats to them, I guess, means you should have a good chance with your story Alice for best game in the future. I hope so. Although, uh, story Alice is like super niche, right? I think it's harder to get attention from a more mainstream thing like a festival when you're doing a niche game. It's like so f I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure. If few players. I do think it's a big niche because of paradox, like historical strategy games, grand strategy and stuff. But um, it's still niche and like very specific taste. But it it doesn't matter, right? Not really. T not here to win a festivals. I'm here to make some good games. A record says, oh, that's good, I didn't know you were also a programmer. I'm a, like, bad programmer. I can program, but it's not really good. Which is why, uh, I'm gonna, if the Patreon does well, like, I'm, I'm starting a Patreon soon for, to support Historia Realis, the development of the game. And if it does well enough, then I can get a programmer to help. And uh, that's coming maybe next week. And uh, I was working on the Patreon today actually, and I think it's gonna be nice. Like, I have some really cool uh, rewards and stuff for the Patreon tiers. And if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a uh, it's a platform where you can support a creator, and in return you get some cool rewards. In my case, I'm gonna I do some Discord rewards and also uh, my games as rewards. So you there's gonna be like Painters Guild for fifty percent off. Uh, there's gonna be a Rogue Mass, cheap as well, and there's gonna be History Realis in there as well. So, anyway, 
Let's move on to the next thing, which is Latin, which is on my screen for a while. Let's read some Latin, like, I haven't done this in a week, so I'm kind of rusty. Let's see how it goes. Pueri uh, sacus plenos. So, this is boys, this is bags, and this is full. Qui a servis portantur vident. Okay, so the boys see uh, the full bags that the slaves carry and ask it interrogant. Quid inest in sacis? Uh, what's in the bags, I guess? Uh, Alex says, okay, I'm going to go. It was interesting to hear about the festival. Cool. Sounds like you made some good contacts. Catch you soon. See you, Alex. Thanks for uh, joining the stream, and I hope to see you again uh, this week. I'm not going to stream tomorrow, but uh, the day after. and So Wednesday and Thursday, there's going to be some streaming, so please join us. Hmm. I haven't seen a nest. I'm just guessing the meaning because you can guess. But is that is that actually one word or two words? Because in sum to be in be upon, so a nest is probably a conjugation of this verb. Which makes sense, but it's like to be inside. So, what's in the bags? Let me see if. Um, if anyone says anything on Discord, nope. Okay, anyway. Julius responded. So Julius answers. I thought they asked the slaves. Anyway. In saco quem leander portat mala in sunt. What is mala? Apple. Is this an apple or is this is this some other fruit? Uh Hic sacum pone, Leander. So, in the bag that uh, Leander carries, there are apples. Uh, put the bag here, Leander. Cool. Uh, sniper, hello, how are you? Leander sacum ponit ante Julium. So Leander puts the bag in front of Julius. Uh, qui aperit eum. I'm not sure what aperit means. Aperit. To uncover. So who who opens it? So the bag is put in front of Julius and he opens it. Julius, ah, videte, pueri, see boys. Hic sacus plenus malorum est. Ah, is hic this? Because it's like this bag is full of apples. But what is Hick exactly? I'm sure I've seen this before. Here, yeah. 
So here's the bag full of apples. Uh, the Drake says, damn it, we should took Latin instead of French. Well, to be fair, French is much easier. But uh, Latin is cooler, I guess. Julius Malum e Sacco Sumit. So, this is something with the apple. What is the this E? The small words are the hardest to remember. Uh, big words are easier. Surprisingly. Julius Malum e Sacco Sumit et Severtit ad Marcum. And here we have some explanation for A, which is means X, X ante A, E, I, O, U, what? A, X ante ceteras literas. So it's the same as X when it is a vowel. Basically, not, not exactly, but basically. But what is X anyway? I don't remember seeing that. Oh, well, there was X at some point, I just forgot. Out of. So, it's this A it means out of. So, Julius takes the apple from the bag, that is Sumit, to take, and Turns to Marcus. Say vertit ad Marcum. I'm pretty sure vertit is to turn. Yep, okay. So he takes the apple, turns to Marcus, and says, Eke malum tum, Marque. Eke malum tum. So, this apple is yours, Marcus. Julius Marco Malum Dat. Julius gives that Marcus the apple. Pater Filio Suo Magnum Malum Dat. Uh, the father gives the, his son a big apple. Ia Marcus Malum Habit. Uh, now Marcus has an apple. Neque quintus malum habet. And and not. And Quintus does not have an apple. Julius quintum ad se vocat et e malum dat. Uh, Julius calls Quintus and gives him an apple. Julius Quinto Malundat. Wait, didn't they do this already? I think it's just the same thing. Julius Quinto Malundat. Julius gives Quinto, Quintus an apple. Iam et Marcus et Quintus Mala habent. And now Marcus and Quintus have apples. Sure. Cool. I think uh, I'm gonna stop here on the Latin for uh, today and I'm gonna move on to history. I've been reading uh, Cicero's biography. Um, I forgot the author, but it's like a modern author, so I'd like to read uh, Plutarch's biography of Cicero, which, we, which I started last week, or like a couple of weeks ago, because this is like the basic source for all other biographies, I guess. 
most Roman biographies are based on Plutarch's biographies. So let's read that for a bit, like uh, 20 minutes or so. I'm actually getting a lot of ideas for the game from Cicero's biography, especially because the author talks so much about childhood, because like it's going chronologically mostly, so he talks a lot about Cicero's education, like studying with uh, at the house of prominent Romans, which is quite interesting, like there was some tutoring from like high-profile Romans and they both both Cicero and Caesar studied under the same guy who I forgot the name but that's not what's important for me it's like I f what I found interesting is how uh, very old politicians and when they got past the age of offices like they had their career, they were consuls, they were censors, they were super old. So, in their old, old age, they dedicated their life to teaching younger Romans with promising futures. So, that's something that can be in the game. Anyway, let's read some. When Verus was convicted, Cicero assessed the fine at 750,000 denarii and because of this was suspected of having been bribed to make the fine a low one. However, the Sicilians were certainly grateful to him and when he was edil, uh, edile, you'd say in English, or edili in Latin, or maybe edili, or Ideally, depending on which line of Latin study you follow, they sent him all sorts of livestock and farm produce from their islands. He used this generosity of theirs only in order to lower the prices of food in Rome, making no profit out of it for himself. He had a fine country estate at Arpinum, a farm near Naples, and another near Pompeii, neither of them very large. The dowry of his wife Terentia came to 100,000 denarii, and he also received a legacy which brought him 90,000. This was enough to enable him to live in easy circumstances, though not on a modest scale, with the Greek and Roman men of letters with whom he associated. He rarely, if ever, had a regular meal before sunset, not so much because he was too busy as because he suffered from a weak digestion. Very important information, Plutarch. He was indeed very particular and even fussy about his health in general and used to have massages at regular intervals and go for a fixed number of walks. I do think it's Cicero's uh, physical weaknesses important to his biography so because he had to use his oratory to make up for his lack in physical skill by looking after himself in this way he managed to maintain a state of health which was free from illness and strong enough to support much hard work and many calls upon his energy the house that used to belong to his father he made over to his brother and lived himself near the, near the Palatine Hill, so that those who came to visit him in the morning should not have the trouble of a long walk. And the visitors who came to his house every day were no fewer than those who went to call on Crassus because of his wealth or on Pompey because of his power in the army, these two being the greatest and most sought after men in Rome. I think this really calls to the the stats that that I'm using in the game it's like yep there's uh, stewardship wealth for Pompey there's martial ability oh I'm sorry for Crassus wealth a martial ability for Pompey and oratory which represents Cicero so yeah those those were important in Rome and then there's also piety and intrigue uh, 
Mon uh, sorry, Pompey in fact used himself to call on Cicero and owed much of his power and reputation to Cicero's help in politics. A number of men with great names stood for the praetorship at the same time as he did, but Cicero came out of, at the top of the poll, and it was generally considered that he handled the legal cases that came before him well and fairly. There is a story of told of Licinius Macer when he came up for trial before Cicero on a charge of extortion. Macer was a powerful personality in Rome on his own account and had the additional advantage of being supported by Crassus. Feeling confident because of his own influence and the help given to him by his friends, he left the court and went off home while the jury was still engaged in voting. He had a quick haircut and put on a clean toga, what is this, with a view to celebrating his acquittal. He was just setting out again to go down to the forum when Crassus met him at the door of his house and told him that he had been convicted by an unanimous vote. He then turned back, threw himself on his bed and died. What is the story? This case gave Cicero the reputation of being one who took the greatest care in presiding over a court. Then there was Vatinius, a man with rough manners who would often behave insolently to the magistrates in court, and he had a neck which was covered with swellings. Once Vatinius came before the court over which Cicero was presiding and made some request of him. Oh, sorry, I read that <laughs> with the wrong <laughs> intonation. Instead of granting it at once, Cicero took some time to think it over and Vatinus, Vatin, Vatinius said that he, if he had been praetor, would not have made any question of the matter. But, Cicero replied, you have the advantage over me in having much more neck. Okay. Two or three days before the time came for him to lay down his office, Manilius was brought before him on a charge of extortion. Manilius had the enthusiastic support of the people. He was a friend of Pompey's and it was thought that, he, that the persecution were only attacking Manilius because of Pompey. When Manilius asked for several days in which to make his defense, Cicero granted him only one, and that, he said, must be the ne very next day. There was great popular indignation at this, since as a general rule the praetors used to grant at least 10 days to the accused. The tribunes then brought Cicero in front of a public meeting and accused him of acting unfairly. Cicero first asked to be heard and then said it as he had always, within the limits of the law, treat the defendants kindly and with consideration, he considered that it would be a bad thing for him not to behave in the same way in the case of Manilius. Since he had only one more day at his disposal as praetor, he had deliberately fixed the trial on that day, to put off the trial so that it would come under the supervision of another praetor, was certainly not the part of one who wanted to help Manilius. Okay. These words of his produced a remarkable change in the feelings of the people. They praised him to the skies and begged him to take on personally the defense of Manilius. Cicero readily consented to do so, chiefly for the sake of Pompey who was not in Italy at the time. He then stood up and made another speech in front of the people, vigorously attacking the oligarchical party and all those who were jealous of Pompey. Okay, let's do another one. Both parties, however, that of the nobility and that of the people, combined together to raise him to the consulship. This was done in the interests of the city as a whole, and the reasons were as follows. At first, there had seemed to be no sense at all in the change which Sulla had made in the constitution. But now time has, had passed and people had got used to it, so that the majority considered that it did offer some kind of stability. There were some, however, who, for the sake of their own private interests, and not at all for the general good, wish to disturb the existing state of affairs and make a change. Wow, this guy's pro-Sulla. Anyway. 
Pompey at this time was still engaged in war with the kings of in Pontus and Armenia, and there was no force in Rome capable of dealing with his revolutionaries. They had as their leader Lucius Catalin, a bold and versatile character and one who was ready for anything. He was guilty of many serious crimes and had once been accused of taking the virginity of his own daughter and of killing his own brother. Whoa! Let's highlight this. Fearing that he would be prosecuted for this murder, he had induced Scylla to put down his brother's name as though he were still alive on the lists of those condemned to death. This then was the man whom the scoundrels took as their leader, and they gave pledges of faith to each other which included the sacrificing of a man and the tasting of his flesh. What? What? Catalan had also corrupted a great number of the young men in Rome by approaching them individually and supplying them constantly with amusements, drink and women, powering out money for them to spend on these dissipations. What is going on here? His agitation had, ex had extended to the whole of Etruria which was now ready for revolt, as was the greater part of Cisalpine Gaul. This is like pure propaganda. In Rome itself there were more alarming revolutionary tendencies, the result of the unequal distribution of wealth. While men of the highest reputation and the greatest spirit had beggared themselves by their outlay on shows, entertainments, elections, election expenses and great buildings, money had accumulated in the hands of people whose families were unknown and of no account. I'm gonna highlight this as well. So only a spark was needed to set everything on fire and since the whole state was rotten within itself, it was in the power of any bold man to overthrow it. And that's the Catalan Conspiracy next time, uh, which is the day after tomorrow. And I'll see you guys then, that's gonna be Wednesday uh, at the same time. So thanks so much for watching and uh, bye bye.